How's it going YouTube? Examples TCG here coming at you with a brand new video. Today I'm bringing you guys a, another deck profile and it's going to be a deck profile on something that I've already brought you guys a couple of days ago or about a week ago. I can't remember exactly how long ago it was that I brought the deck profile of Fire Kings to you but nevertheless I'm going to be revisiting that deck and actually bringing you guys a brand new deck profile for Fire Kings and I'm going to explain why I'm going to be bringing you guys a new deck profile compared to obviously the deck profile you saw about a week ago. Um, basically, I had a little bit of a playtest with the old deck profile on uh, YGO Pro, which is where I am today. And the deck felt very, very slow, extremely, extremely sluggish. And I thought to myself, okay, if I want to start playing this deck in the current format and playing something a little bit different to other people... I need to get this deck a little bit quicker, I need to speed this deck up, and I need to be able to go into plays and stop plays as quickly and as swiftly as possible. So I went onto YouTube, I found a bunch of different, uh, like I watched a bunch of different Fire King profiles, should I say, and I kind of took inspiration from a few different decks and kind of made uh, my own changes. Not too many changes, but my own changes to the deck profiles nevertheless. So what I'm going to be profiling today, guys, is a brand new Fire King deck profile. I feel that this is going to be a little bit more competitive um, compared to the previous deck profile that I did make for the Fire Kings. I say this because I played against a bunch of different decks on YGO Pro 2. I played against like, ABCs, Blue Eyes. I played against um, Super Heavy Samurai, which obviously isn't that competitive, but I played against them. I've played against a bunch of different decks, basically. Some meta, some non-meta decks. And this particular deck has got about a 65% win rate roughly against the decks I have played. And obviously that's not necessarily going to carry over into real life and into locals. But still, I want to bring you guys this deck profile. I want to kind of show you what I've changed, uh, why I've changed all that kind of stuff. Um, and go from there really. So the main Fire King monsters haven't really changed too much. I still run a three copies of Garunex. I still run a three copies of Ganesha. I've got rid of the mini Garunex and uh, I've cut down Yaksha and Barong to two. Now, the reason I've done this, I was playing um, Garunex at two, but I felt like sometimes, even though you can cycle these cards very, very easily in this deck, I just felt that the Garunex, I, just, I was just missing that third one because sometimes... I would end up playing the first two. They'd either lose by, uh, like, be destroyed by battle rather than card effect, and obviously their effect does not activate then. Or I just felt like I needed that third Garunex just in case um, the other two get banished, obviously, from the graveyard. So I felt like three copies was necessary, so I added in the third copy. This guy is insane. Obviously, as I said, you can chain him quite quickly and quite frequently. For example... You can play him on your turn, pop him on your turn, and he comes back during your opponent's standby phase. And then obviously if they manage to get rid of him again, he comes back during your standby phase. He's basically a phoenix. That's basically what this card is. It's absolutely incredible. I love the card to pieces. As I said, I play three copies. I have seen decks that play two copies, but I prefer to play three. I play two copies of Yaksha and two copies of Barong. I did not feel like I needed a third copy of either of these two cards. You see them often enough to be able to actually make them useful. And even if you don't see them, you can search them from the deck anyway. So these two, I still keep at two. And I feel like the best actual Fire King monster, apart from Grunex, we have is the new one, which is Fire King Avatar Ganesha. If you guys don't know what he does, basically when a monster effect is activated, you can negate the activation if you destroy one other fire monster you control or in your hand. If this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can target one Fire Beast, Beast Warrior, or Wing Beast monster in your graveyard, except Ganesha, special summon it, but it has its effects negated. Also destroy it during the end phase. You can only use the effect of Fire King Ganesha once per turn. So if you've got the likes of Garunex in your hand, you can obviously destroy him with Ganesha's effect, and then obviously Garunex starts to basically ball roll from there. Also, this guy allows you to special summon Garunex or your Sacred Phoenix um, from your graveyard and start the ball running with their like chain effects as well, because obviously its effects are negated, but Garunex effect kind of pops off when it hits the graveyard anyway, so by that time it's cleared the field, it's uh, like the effect, the effects of being negated are now reversed, so you can start using it again. You can come back during the standby phase, all that kind of different kind of stuff. Hence why I do run three copies of Ganesha. I then only run the one copy of Co Coach Soldier Wolfbark. Uh, it didn't really feel like I needed three copies in the end. Uh, three copies just felt like a little bit of overkill. 
sometimes I did feel like I needed two copies of this card, but then other times I didn't feel like I needed two copies of this card. So I'm going to keep it at one for now. I might end up changing it about, I might end up swapping it around. But at the moment, I do only run one copy of Coach Soldier Wolfbark. Oh, and before we go any further, the reason I'm bringing you this deck profile on YGO Pro 2 rather than real life is because some of the cards that you see in this deck profile, I don't actually have in real life yet. I'm still trying to source them. I'm sure that, still trying to grab them off of people. And I'm still trying to make the deck in real life so I can actually play it at obviously locals, nationals, etc. Hence why I'm bringing you on YGO Pro 2. But nevertheless, as I was saying, Coach Soldier Wolf Bark, sometimes I felt like I needed an additional copy, sometimes I didn't. So I just feel like one copy is enough for now. If we do end up needing more, I will bring obviously more out or, or I will add more in, should I say. And then run two copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. In my opinion, one of the best hand traps, if not the best hand trap in this deck by a country mile. If I was going to add like another card in to make this a 41 card deck, I would add in another Ash Blossom because it is that good. But obviously we've got a ban list impending, so we might end up seeing this ban. We might end up seeing it go to one. I'm not too sure what they're going to do with the ban list. I know the magicians are going to get hit. I don't know about hand traps, but we'll have to wait and see. But if I could run or if I wanted to run three copies, I would. But at the moment, I feel like two copies is more than enough for this deck. I then run three copies of Gaiden Ariande, I think is how you pronounce that. I don't use it for the pendulum whatsoever. I literally just use it for his normal effect, which is if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can reveal, reveal even three counter strap cards from your deck. Your opponent chooses one for you to add to your hand. You shuffle the rest back into your deck. So when this effect pops, I if I still have all three strikes in my deck, I will search all three strikes. That way my opponent has no choice but to give me a strike. If not, it'll be one strike, one son and one judgment. And then obviously if we can't use any of those, then it's whatever we've got left in the deck. Hence why I do run the full Solemn Brigade just because of this card right here. I'd probably still run a full Solemn Brigade even if this card didn't exist. But I run three copies of that anyway. And then I run the one copy of Sacred Phoenix. It's basically the same as uh, Grunex, except it's a heavy storm rather than a dark hole. Um, so that's pretty nice. It's pretty good to get rid of back row. Um, this card, would, I, if I was going to cut anything, I would cut this card for either another Ash Blossom or another uh, Wolf Bark. But other than that, I feel like the monster lineup is pretty solid. I then run two copies of Onslaught and one copy of Circle. If you remember in the previous deck, I was running three and three. I don't feel the need to run three and three. I'd either run three and one or two and one. I feel like two and one is uh, the best uh, way forward for the deck. Hence why I do run two copies of Onslaught, one copy of Circle. It just feels like it's the best combination for those particular spell cards in this particular deck. I was contemplating not even running Circle, but I felt like sometimes it would be quite handy to have one circle in the deck, hence why I have added in one. I did have three Onslaught and no circles, but I've basically gone, okay, I'll take out the Onslaught, but I'll put in a circle, see how that works, and it actually works quite well, hence why I run the two and one ratio there. I then run only two copies of Fire King Island. I don't feel like three is necessary, especially if only running two Terraform. Two copies of Fire King Island is more than enough to have in this deck, in my personal opinion. Hence why I only run the two copies of Fire King Island and obviously the two copies of Terraforming to find the Fire King Island. These are dead cards. Obviously, if you end up seeing these, um, sometimes I'll try and bluff with these in the back row, but nine times out of ten, I'll just keep them in my hand. I then run three copies of Tenki. I don't run Tensu anymore. I don't run uh, Bear anymore. This is just solely and utterly for the sole purpose of getting Yaksha wrong or Ganesha out as quickly as I possibly can and also uh, adding an additional 100 attack uh, to all the Beast Warrior type monsters that I control, which is obviously Yaksha Barong and Ganesha, and also, uh, also Coach Soldier Wolfbark as well. So having these out on the, uh, out on the field, should I say, is uh, quite handy, but at the same time, um, obviously, I sometimes just don't see the card at all. But nine times out of 10, I'll at least draw into one, which means I can go, okay, I play Tenki, I search this, I play this, I start my plays off, and I also gain 100 attack from it as well. Hence why I do run the three copies of Tenki. Um, part of me is uh, contemplated putting at least one copy of Bear into this deck just so I can search into Tenki quite quickly and quite um, efficiently, just to get that one, ten uh, one Tenki into my hand and be able to start my ball rolling with my Fire King plays. So that is something that I've kind of got in the back of my head of, okay, 
can I fit in the bear into this deck just to see if it uh, helps the deck out at all. But at the moment, I don't run any copies of bear and it works quite well. However, sometimes I would like to see at least one more tanky or a tanky at all. So I am contemplating putting in at least one copy of um, bear into this deck just so I can actually search out fire formation tanky. And the final spell I run is Rekindling. I feel that this card, if we could run it at three, would bolster this deck tenfold. It wouldn't make it like a tier one deck, but it was. To, it, I feel like it would be something that actually helped this deck grow and helped this deck become a lot better than it is at the moment. And I say this because this is kind of a sleeper deck. Like it's a deck that can do very well, but at the same time, it can be very, very disappointing. And I say that because... When I've been playing testing this particular deck, I've been, as I said, beating the likes of ABCs, like some of the top tier meta decks at the moment. But then sometimes I'd lose to something stupid like super heavy, a super heavy six samurai, uh, not super heavy six samurai, but super heavy samurai, should I say. Uh, and I'm just like, okay, how have I lost a super heavy samurai, but then won against ABCs? It doesn't really make sense to me, uh, but still, as I was saying, if we could run more than one copy of Rekindling, I would certainly run more than one copy of Rekindling. Unfortunately, we can't. Hence why I only uh, run the one copy because it's all I can run. Now, one card that was actually missing from the last deck profile, and I was like, why the hell if I not put this card into the deck? It helps the deck so much, and that is Torrential Tribute. I run three copies of this because even if you've got to sacrifice your own Fire Kings, you pop off their effects anyway. I don't know why I didn't have it in the last build. I apologize to everyone. I was like, you should be running Torrentials. Why are you not running Torrentials? I don't know what I was thinking. I apologize. There's three copies in this particular build of the deck. Absolutely insane card for the deck. As I said, it helps you go into your Fire King uh, plays a lot easier and a lot more swifter. As I mentioned earlier, I do run the full Solemn Brigade. So one Judgment, one Warning, and three Strike. If I could, I would run probably five Strikes end of like no discussion needed um solemn warning is probably the least favorite card in the solemn brigade that i've got in the deck so if i was going to cut anything for a bear i'd probably get with get rid of the warning for the bear or even a warning for like the um second ash bottom and then get rid of the sacred phoenix for like the bear or a second wolf bark like there's so many different things that i've contemplated in my head of oh i could do this but i could also do this like to cut out cards and add cards in and see what works at the moment as i said this deck works quite well so i'm not going to tinker with it too much but if i need to make any changes going forward those are a few of the thought process that, processes even that i have had then run two copies of drowning mirror force it just disrupts your opponent's plays uh especially if they just literally line up their board with attacking monsters and you just go yeah Drowning Mirror Force, send them all back into your deck and shuffle it, please. Like, it, it's just, it's a ridiculous card. It helps out a lot with aggressive decks. There's so many decks out there that are very, very aggressive in the current format that have literally all of their monsters up in attack mode and you're just like, yeah, Drowning Mirror Force. And they're like, oh, okay, I've just made a whole play for absolutely nothing. That's one thing I really like about this deck is it's like destruct destructive ability and it's disruptive disruptiveness even. Like these two cards are very destructive in their own right. This card right here can just blow up the whole of the back row. And then obviously this card right here is basically a dark hole. So if your opponent literally just goes off and forgets about Garunex, like I've had so many people do it to me on YGO Pro and in the past, even when I've been playing Fire Kings, it's ridiculous. Like I've summoned Garunex, they've popped it, I don't know, with, um, I, I don't even know what cards I can think of. Maybe they've got their own Torrential Tribute, for example. I summoned it, they're like, yeah, I'm just going to Torrential that. Cool, no problem. Your standby phase, bring it back, blow up the field. And then obviously they get rid of it again. They summon everything that they want. Yeah, okay, I'll bring it back in my standby phase then. It's such a good such a good card. I, I just, I understand why people haven't been running Fire Kings because there have been like better decks around. But at the same time, I'm surprised we haven't seen a few more people at least trying to build a Fire King deck and doing well at tournaments. There's obviously a reason why this deck isn't good at tournaments, but I think <clears throat> the more people tinker with these types of decks, the more likely they are to surprise a few people at events. Hence why ever since this particular deck, like the structure deck came out, I've just been like playing around with it, making sure that I can try and build the best builds possible, looking at other people's builds, taking stuff from them, all that kind of stuff. Hence why I've chopped and changed this since the last time you've seen the deck profile. 
from myself for Fire Kings. And then I run the one copy of Bottomless Trap Hole and uh, one copy of Struggling Battle or Evenly Matched. It's called Struggling Battle on here because I think I've got an older version of YGO Pro 2. Not too sure, but still, Evenly Matched on there as well to round off the deck. So it's exactly 40 cards. I could probably have a little bit more room to add in a couple of extra cards, as I said. Uh, for example, another copy of Ash Blossom, another copy of Wolfbark, or even a copy of Bear for Tenki. I'm not too sure yet. I might add in a few other cards in the future if I need to do so, if I feel like it's going to help out the deck. And then onto the extra deck. This is the one thing that I didn't really know what I wanted to have in the extra deck, hence why I've watched quite a few deck profiles and like learned quite a bit about this archetype and what other people are running and what people are running in their extra deck. I've still obviously got one space open. Not too sure what I'm going to put in that extra space. If you guys could let me know, that would be greatly appreciated. But just a quick rundown of the extra deck. I'm playing one copy of Do Little Chimera. Basically, this card is the only link monster you need to run in the deck. That's, that's it. Only link monster really you need to run in the deck. For one copy of that, I run one copy of number 38. One copy of number for, uh, 41, should I say. Uh, one copy of number 82. One Gaga -ga -ga Cowboy. One Utopia Lightning. One Utopia. One Tornado Dragon. One Abyss Dweller. One Diamond Dire Wolf. One Silent Honor Arc. One Castile. And two copies of Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Tiger King. I'm kind of contemplating putting in another copy of Diamond Dire Wolf just to round off the extra deck. Part of me wants to do it because it's such a good card for this deck. Uh, obviously because you can uh, target a beast beast warrior or wing beast once you control one other card on the field and destroy them so obviously it works very very well with the uh, fire kings so i'm probably just going to put in two diamond dire wolves and just call that the extra deck um i don't really think of i can't really think of should i say anything else i want to add into this extra deck apart from another diamond dire wolf so i'm probably going to end up putting in another diamond dire hence why i double clicked it to duplicate the card in here just to say look this is what it probably would look like. So I'm going to hit save down here. One thing I am actually going to do is whilst I've got everything in my head with regards to like the Ash Blossom, the um, Wolf Bark, and also the, um, the Bear, I'm literally just going to put them all down uh, in the side deck. So I'm like, okay, if I do want anything, these are the cards that I could add in. So I could have a 43 card deck if I really wanted to, Part of me is like, I should do it because obviously it will like bolster the deck. So if I pop these in like so, this is what the deck would look like in its full. Obviously, I would have a side deck if I went to events. But this is what the deck would look like if I ended up running the cards that I said I would run. Uh, obviously, I haven't dropped anything out for the Ash Blossom. I haven't dropped anything out for the second Wolf Bark. And I haven't dropped anything out for the Bear. And to be honest, the 43 card deck isn't actually that bad considering that you've got like 60 card light swarm variants dropping around in the current meta as well. Um, so nevertheless, guys, that's going to do it for this deck profile. As I said, it is a deck that I've already brought you guys. I do apologize about that, but I've like chopped and changed this particular version of the deck up. It's a little bit more competitive in my personal opinion. It's definitely going to be more competitive at my locals considering some of the stuff that people are running there. I've already beaten on YGO Pro 2. So we'll have to wait and see. Speaking of locals, I had the Layer of Darkness Structure Deck Reveal event this past weekend. Unfortunately, I went one and three. I didn't really like the uh, Structure Deck itself. It didn't really have the greatest synergy. The cards that you get, like the, the new cards you get in the deck, about four out of five of those, I think that I could potentially make a deck around probably going with infernoids or something along those lines um, i might end up bringing you guys a profile of that in the future if i can like do a little bit more research into the actual archetype itself what works with the archetype and just playing around and seeing what i prefer with that particular deck or that particular uh, deck idea but nevertheless guys as i said this is it for the fire king deck profile for today if you guys did enjoy please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more trading card game content if you guys are into your trading card games or you're also into your gaming, um, obviously your gaming, for example, Fortnite, uh, Destiny 2, all that kind of stuff, please be sure to go and check out my Twitch channel. I'll leave a link to my Twitch channel in the description down below. I do live stream Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I basically stream six out of the seven days a week. I always have Wednesdays off. And Wednesdays, I'm going to try and start bringing like bulk recording 
videos for my Yu-Gi-Oh or my training card ch uh, game channel. I was going to say Yu-Gi-Oh channel, but I, then I remembered I'm going to be making my own training card game. So I'm obviously going to bring you guys videos on that as well. Uh, but nevertheless, that is it for the deck profile. A very, very quick note on my training card game. I'm having a look at a lot of other like training card game makers, seeing what has been successful for them. Obviously, watching their YouTube videos to see how they build their particular um, training card game, how they've been printed it off and all that kind of different stuff. So I've been doing a lot more research into my own training card game rather than just going, okay, I'm going to make a training card game, which is what I've done in the past and like not really followed through of it. Whereas this time around, I'm like, yes, I'm definitely going to be doing this. I'm definitely going to be making my training card game, but I want to do a little bit of research first. So be on the lookout for videos for that, guys. They should be fairly soon, hopefully. But nevertheless, as I said, that's it for today's deck profile. I'm hoping to start uploading every other day, if not every day. So be on the lookout for more YGO Pro 2 deck profiles. Be on the lookout for openings, dual videos, all that kind of stuff. I'm hoping that we have a locals event this weekend that I can attend. I still have my like Samurai Sworn deck to run at locals whilst I am building this deck right here. So fingers crossed we do have a locals this weekend that I can compete in. Get some footage for you guys and actually start bringing you guys a lot more content, which is what I want to do. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next video.